who just has a fight 30 years ago and he just can't, he's homeless now, but so he constantly kind of relives his fight and he's training. He takes all this on the streets and he, so it was kind of an, she wrote an interesting little, you know, thing. And, and, um, so, you know, you, you're just trying to find those things. I'm doing a thing starting Saturday in Texas mm-hmm. called Gallows Road. And a guy had brought a script to me a couple of years ago. And I liked the script about two brothers opening a store in a southern town. It's kind of a period piece. And, of course, uh, there's a group, a uh, family, who used to own the store, who now, who lost it. And now they're jealous. And so they they try to run them out and set fire to this house. And, um, and, and not totally accidentally, but the one guy loses his family. They burn up in the house, and he's injured pretty badly. And so it's kind of a story of uh, forgiveness in a strange way. And and um, and I, I like the I like the idea of it. A lot of the stuff I just personally don't like what the story says, and so I kind of walk away. And so when I find something that speaks to my own beliefs, sure, um, then it's uh, so I'll do that. Um, as a baseball movie, a friend of mine, Phil Dunlin, who directed me in a movie called uh, Man in a Silo, a short movie. Okay. Which is, which is an interesting um, story about, um, you know, this uh, an interracial marriage, and uh, he's an exec in Chicago, but she's from Wisconsin, and her grandmother is now alone. Her mother is now alone, and... Uh, she wants to move their kid and the family to Wisconsin to the farm, and he's commuting. But when he gets out there, um, he picks up all these, these racial signals from the mother and doesn't like the way she relates to his kid. And um, he fights with his wife because he's not, you know, the. And then after one of the fights, the wife. And the kid is killed in a car accident, but the mother survives, but she's crippled. Mm. So he ends up taking care of the mother, and he's losing his mind. And so when, so, so when uh, these guys came to me with this story, or, or any of these stories, the stories of life, so I'm always looking for these stories that that I find fascinating that you want to tell. So, right. So that's how the, but you never you don't have control over what happens to them. That's the the downside. Sure. There's a movie I did with Kix Brooks um, from Brooks and Dunn. Right. It was a Western, and we shot it, and uh, I don't know, it was a couple of years now, so I don't know when it's going to come out. So it's, I bet there are probably 15 movies I've never seen. I don't know where they are that they have a way of surfacing sometimes. Sure. On cable or whatever, mm-hmm. but uh, but they're, they're fascinating Um uh, so the guy who did um, uh, Man in the Silo, his movie uh, they're doing called uh, High and Outside. Mm-hmm. It's a great script, and uh, I play a baseball coach. We'll shoot that the 1st of July. Probably the most fun thing I'm doing is with uh, Frank Darabout, mm-hmm. who mm-hmm. created The Walking Dead and all that. Yeah, We're of course. doing um, a, a series for stars um, called... Um, City of Angels. It's about the um, uh, the crime syndicates uh, uh-huh. in Los Angeles. Uh-huh. It's a Los Angeles version. And uh, I'm playing a character named Bunny, who is the head of the black crime family. Mm-hmm. And uh, we'll I'll start shooting that in July and July and August. And uh, so that'll be a lot of fun. And I'm I'm excited. I'm excited about working with him. And I'm so. so you know, when you get a chance to work with some people, uh, there's a movie I did with Hilary Swank that is coming because it'll be a, a, a big film, I think, um, called You're Not You. And um, right. uh, Hilary Swank, Emmy Rosem's in it, um, Josh um, Duvall um, is in it, and it's a really good cast, and it's a great script, and... Um, um, Loretta Devine plays uh, my my wife, who's has. They both have uh, Lou Gehrig's disease, and oh, okay. okay. So uh, that will be out this fall. But you know, um, I, I I I'm blessed to you know stay still, stay busy. 
but looking for those stories that uh, are worth telling. And now, like I said, the more I begin to realize, I just just finished last week um, a movie called Wizard Dream with mm-hmm. uh, Malcolm McDowell. Okay. And uh, you know, but once again, I, I you know I, I'm, I'm in the movie, but uh, and I like Malcolm and. Uh, you know, but it's, it's so, but finding, I think right now it's, it's about me really committing to just, okay, let me, let me tell the stories. Let me, uh, and then also producing because I want to have some hand in, you know, what happens when we did everything with Jake. I mean, I can give my opinion and I was down as a producer on that, but I didn't want to, uh, I didn't really have a play in how, the choices that were made after the movie was made, and that's sure, what I want that to was the problem after. with it, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 So, so, do you think there'd be any chance you'll ever want to write a musical of Space Hunter Adventures in the Forbidden Zone? <laughs> you know, it's funny because um, there are some. All these movies have a certain fan base, mm-hmm. and the people who really li- like Space Hunter. It was Space Hunter was one of those kind of odd movies that uh, mm-hmm. um, uh, that. Uh, you know, um, it needs Michael Jackson. You'd have Captain EO. <laughs> <laughs> I think Peter Strauss was too happy being there, but uh, yeah, you know, but it was, um, and they kept tried to come up with a 3D that a 3D system that didn't work very well, and so. And that was probably the first time was, you, you know. That was probably the first time you met Ivan Reitman too, right, on that show. That's right. Yeah, it was the first time. Yeah, I haven't um, uh, acquired the film from um, French uh, uh, John Lafleur. He was the director, producer, writer, and then after two weeks of shooting, Columbia fired him. And I didn't realize you could be fired if you were the producer, director, and writer. But uh, and Ivan took over the movie and uh, um, brought in another director, and um, you know so. That was the first time we worked together, and I think uh, it almost cost me Ghostbusters because I think that character in Space Hunter, I think that's how Ivan saw me. And I thought, <laughs> you know, it's like, and uh, I think he thought I was all wrong for Ghostbusters. And I'm like, no, but that's the character was that right. bigger than life, and you know, he sort of strutted around and. You know, um, sort of like in the me. octagon, right? The Chuck Norris octagon. You're kind oh, of like yeah. that too, right? Yeah, yeah. The octagon, which is a lot, got lost on the floor, or whatever. But I, I like Chuck. And, uh, <laughs> it's a, uh, yeah, Hudson gone, right? Is what just like, gone. yeah. You know, it's like, well, <laughs> but I'm not in the movie. It's like, uh, what happened? You know? Yeah, yeah, uh, exactly. Uh, you know, every once in a while, I did one with Robert Downey called Heart and Souls, and the same thing. And the director yeah. called me and apologized. Ron Underwood, mm-hmm. because he used me in a couple other films. Um, after, but he says, ah, I'm sorry, but that storyline just got wiped out. And, no, it's too bad. Uh, I still get residuals, so I guess that's some <laughs> consolation. But uh, yeah, Tell, so but you, you know, but Ivan and yeah. uh, Harold came. They brought him in, uh, Harold Ramis. Yeah, he's right. got so that I voice those guys in. Yeah, yeah. So do you ever yeah. get? I mean, I guess it's a bit redundant to talk about Ghostbusters. Um, but I, I guess I, I have to ask you a couple of questions if you don't mind. No, so no, I, I don't okay. mind. Actually, I'm 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 very at a good place with Ghostbusters. I think it's, I'm very flattered that the fans have really, um, you know, supported this film and 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 taken it to a place I never imagined. I mean, I, if somebody had told me, you know, 30 years ago when we did it that uh, there'd be guys walking around in Ghostbuster outfits and building at their own expense backpacks mm-hmm. that. Um, do these extraordinary things and taking their cars and turning them into ectomobiles and right. uh, every state has a chapter. There's chapters all over the world. As you know, there's the uh, Paris chapter and there's Southern France chapters. Brussels. I was in Brussels and um, 50 guys showed up in their Ghostbuster outfits and their backpacks and I mean uh, Australia, New Zealand. I mean all over the world. It's it's and and. I think with um, Stargate and Star Wars, Star Trek, those shows, the studio has, you know, been what's been pushing it. You know, they they have these conventions, they have these 
you know, they keep the franchise going. But Ghostbusters Studio has had nothing to do with this. Is all just people who love the movie, and I, I just right. find that really extraordinary. And people introduce it to their children, and so now you get all these little kids who love the Ghostbusters, and they're four and five years old because their parents grew up with it, and now it's become this family thing that you can share. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, and even the grandparents still like the movie. It's one of those things that sort of really bridged across all the ages. And so I'm I'm very uh, uh, honored to have gotten the chance to be uh, a part of that, that movie. When I started acting in Detroit, and uh, I've done a lot of, not a lot, but some regional theater. I did a play in Minnesota and uh, a few years back. And in the play, everybody in the, the play had been acting for at least 25 years, Mm -hmm. but uh, nobody had had a major film release or, you know, they'd been making their living doing regional theater and theater and tried to get into, you know, movies and never really um, found a way. So to have a movie like Ghostbusters, Mm -hmm. that is a world phenomenon that uh, uh, I'm, I'm very, you know, now I wish some things could have been handled differently. Sure, yeah. But uh, I, I try not to dwell on it too much. But uh, I think it could have that could have been a life career changing experience. Sure. That ended up not being, um, you know, it was changing in ways other ways, but not the way I had hoped. It yeah. Was. Well, and you, that's interesting because I, I've and I've seen you mention. I've seen you know as a fan. I've seen them. You know, these little trivia facts pop up and how how Winston was supposed to come in on page six and end up coming in on page 67. So, I mean, why, why do you think they chose to change the character prior to shooting when they were so in such a predominant character initially? Uh, you know, I don't know. Um, I was told that um, a lot of the things they had Winston doing uh, Winston was the one that got slimed in the hotel mm-hmm. that Bill Murray did. They wanted to um, um, give Bill Murray more to do because obviously he was, you know, he was the money. I mean, he was. Um, Winston thought of the uh, Marshmallow Man um, that Danny Aykroyd's character ended up doing. Right. And so, uh, and I, but I thought, you, you know, you don't have to take the character out to do that. I mean, so you know, I mean, so why? bring him in halfway. And then to my surprise, when the second one came, they did pretty much the same thing. I mean, they have him there in the, that opening scene, but then he's gone. Mm-hmm. And I go, but why? I, I don't, uh, so I can't really answer that question because I don't know, you know, I don't know who makes those choices. Is it a studio? Is it, the, but, um, but it was very, it was very frustrating for me. Sure. Because I was, you know, when I took the role, I thought I was taking, you know, some of the, you think you're doing this role, and then suddenly it's a whole other thing. And we had mm-hmm. rehearsed. I mean, we rehearsed for about three weeks before we started shooting. Right, right. So uh, I'm thinking we're doing this, and then suddenly uh, it's it was hard. It was one of the hardest adjustments I've ever had to make. I mean, I, I just, um, my wife and I are together now. We weren't married then, but she kind of talked me through it because I just, I couldn't make sense out of it. I couldn't when the movie came out and suddenly there's billboard and I'm not on the billboard. I mean, it's, it's four of us, but they have it up here as three of us. I mean, I don't know, you know, and being black from Michigan, Mm -hmm. um, you know, you grow up and everything that happens in life, you, you can explain it with that, you know, it's because I'm black, you know, I don't Mm -hmm. care what it is, you know what I mean? If, um, Anything that happens is raining. It's raining is because I'm black, you know. But <laughs> you you really you reach a point where you can't you can't grow in this business and hold on to those that sort of limited view. Sure. But I can't really um, say it's because I mean you know I've seen Eddie Murphy and a lot of guys do stuff that so I can't say these things didn't happen because uh, I, I don't know I I don't, I don't know. Okay. You know, I mean, I, I fans tell me what they think, and you know, but I, I who knows? I mean, uh, I, I don't know. It's, yeah, it's almost uh, like you're. It's almost kind of like the way your 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 position, like that character is positioned in that film. It's like you're almost the straight man, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a straight many, man, which is, 
Yeah, which is which is cool, and I and I can do that. I just don't know why can't he be? You know, why why did he have to be taken?